Log entry, the catch Scarlet Queen. Position, 33 degrees 14 minutes west, 32 degrees 6 minutes north. Gyro compass course, 257. Wind, fresh, sky fair. Remarks, departed Kobe, Japan with three crew confined to sick bay due to mutinous actions of first officer. Reason for mutiny, the Boston Geisha and Chesapeake Bay. It was mid-afternoon when the Scarlet Queen stood into the broad harbor of Kobe. Last time I'd been there, it had been teeming with merchantmen and busy with lighters wallowing between anchored ships and the crowded docks. That was before the war. Now there was only a scattering of native craft flying in and out, a few American liberties and victories, and the rusted hulls of sunken Japanese freighters breaking through the dirty water. The industrial section of the city behind had been firebombed into a skeleton of lonely chimneys and portions of single walls. I cleared in through Army occupation Take officials, and we found dockage at a half-collapsed pier that somehow gave you a sense of the apathy of the whole nation to which it was connected. After night fell, my chief mate Gallagher and the rest of the crew, except one sad-eyed gangway watch, headed up a path through the ruined warehouses toward town. I settled down in my cabin. The night was stuffy and hot. And the whole picture was helped by the sampan that splashed her anchor on my windward. The faint breeze sweeping across her came to me full of the stink of rotting fish, rancid soybean sauce, and souring rice. A couple of hours went by, and I heard the clatter of feet across our gangway. I had my head out of the cabin door just as three of my crew stumbled aboard. They weren't drunk, they were hurt. Their clothes were ragged and their faces were torn and bleeding. I called one of them over. Yes, sir. What the devil happened, Nielsen? You guys pick a sumo wrestler or something? Who's the chief, sir? Gallagher? Where is he? He's at the Rose Bar. He's roaring, sir. He's off his nut. Well, how did it start? I don't know. Three of us were at the bar and the chief come in from someplace and just started in on us like he was off his nut. But he could drink better than that, sir. I'm sorry, Nielsen. I've been tangled up before, but the guffy had to give us along with it. Says Captain Carney can look for a new chief mate. He ain't going any farther. Hey, what? That's right, sir. Says he's jumping ship here in Kobe, of all places. I shouldn't have left the ship, but I knew what Nielsen meant. Kobe's no place to be in Gallagher's condition. In my log, Kobe was about number three in the tough ports of the world. And so Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tolman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week, a complete entry in the log, and every week, a league further in The Strange Voyage of the Scarlet Queen. I left instructions with my gangway watch, dropped Nielsen and the other two at an Army first aid station for some stitches and anti-tetanus shots, and headed for the Rose Bar myself. I shouldn't have gone. I was under contract to a Shanghai firm called Kang and Son. And their contact here in Kobe was to meet me on the ship and supply me with more instructions for my voyage after a $10 million prize somewhere in the South Pacific. So far on the trip, wherever there had been Kang men... There had also been others working for Constantino and bribing, stealing, and murdering to stop the voyage of the Scarlet Queen. This sticky Japanese night held a lot of potential. I fought my way along Kobe's streets crowded with smells, sounds, and humanity. I elbowed past street urchins, beggars, professional riffraff, finally found the garish front of the Rose Bar a block or so down from Motomachi Street. Gallagher wasn't in sight. The squat bartender grinned at me when I walked up to him. Put a greasy glass in front of him. Uh, Hello, Yang. Uh, What do you drink? Nothing. I look for man. Big red hair. Uh, He fights three other men here. You see him? uh, Oh, yes. 
I see him all right. You know where he is? Oh, yes, yes. I know. Where is he? Why you want him? He's my chief mate, and I want him to go back to the ship. Oh, yes. Very good. All things very high now in Japan. In the fresh one. Okay, how much? All things very high. Uh, chief mate cost, um, uh, $100 max. Yeah, you're a real comedian, Charlie. Uh, I'll give you a ten. Oh, no. I give you ten. You give me ninety. <laughs> ten. He's a low-type chief mate. Oh, then why you want to find him, huh? I'll see you later, Charlie. You're too funny for me. Oh, those, those, please, wait a minute, Yank. Uh, make me an offer. I thought that's what we were talking about. I said ten, didn't I? Ten dollars max. Oh, it worth more. Uh, wreck twenty. Ten now and ten if he's where you say he is. Here. Arigato, uh, arigato, gozaimasu. Go upstairs in the back. First room on that side. If you throw you down, I still get my other ten. The stairway led to the dim, whispering second floor of the building. I knocked on the first door to the right. I heard another door close softly inside the room someplace. Then I knocked again. There was no answer, so I went in. Gallagher sat slouched at a table and held two glasses and a half-emptied bottle. What are you, uh... You're pinning on a pretty good one, aren't you, Red? Uh, Come on, it's time you went back to the ship. Get out of here, Connie. I'm not going with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk it over in the morning after you slept this off. I don't like the food. I don't like the work. I don't like you. I don't like the whole stinking thing. Come on, Red. Get out of here, Connie. You're a... Brain you with it. I quit bottle. acting like a teenage punk, Gallagher. You don't believe me. Get out of here. Get on your feet, you rum hound. Let go of me. I'm telling you, Connie. Let go or I'll toss you out of the window. All right, Red. All right, now get up. We're going back to the ship. I'm not going with you. Stay in here. Leave me a full of rotten liquor, Red. I'm fed up with you. I'll show you how fed up I am. Take it easy, Red. That's enough. I haven't even started. All right, Gallagher. Sleep it off here, then. That's the idea, Connie. And the Queen sails at dawn. With you aboard or without you. I started back to the ship trying to figure this thing out. There were two things wrong in the Rose Bar outside of Charlie, the bartender. Gallagher's eyes didn't look as drunk as he acted. And he could hit harder than he hit me. But from there on, it was his story, and I couldn't see any payoff coming from our knocking each other around that room for the rest of the night. I stumbled down the path toward the warehouses and onto our collapsing pier. I picked up the friendly sound of water stroking the sides of the wooden hull. The lights of the queen gave me a feeling of warmth after the trouble and the subdued uneasiness of the Kobe night. I felt like I was coming home as I walked up to her. Then I stopped. Part of coming home was seeing the gangway watch standing at the after starboard corner of the main house and ready with a smile as I came aboard. But he wasn't there. I started running. I was in the middle of the gangway. When I heard the shots, by instinct, I went into a crouch and hugged the plank. The first set of footsteps came fast. He jumped from the rail to the quayside faster than I could draw and aim my automatic. Two slugs were all I wasted in the darkness. I had to see what he'd left aboard. Part of it was in sight when I looked up. A man in a white jacket with one red sleeve staggered out of my cabin. Pardon the informality, Skipper. You are Connie, aren't you? Yeah, who are you? I'm Chalmers. Does that mean anything to you? That depends on the story that goes with it. Here, come on in. I'll take a look at that arm. Uh, no, wait. I went there. I don't know how dead he is. Who? There were two of them. Stopped one in there, but the other one... Well, twist a handkerchief around it. What's the matter with you? Look at that deck. Pardon me if I bleed to death. Forget it. You know who he is? Yeah. His name is McAllister. Mm -hmm. Here, let me see that arm. All right, hold. What does he work for? You're brighter than that, Connie. How do you think he picked me? Constantino, don't answer that. All right, hold still, will you? 
Big. Yeah. 25 caliber. Yeah. Scorched your coat. Where were you? Told you there were two of them. I was after the one who grabbed my briefcase. You brought it in a briefcase? That's great. Why didn't you wear a Chinese flag? Hey, look, don't tell Kang how it happened. I, I've been trying to save up enough to get back to the States. I'll never get another job out here if this gets back to Kang. At this rate, I'll never get to Kang. What were the instructions, do you know? Instructions? I don't know. They gave me a package wrapped in oil skin. I just threw it in, in my... In your briefcase. Yeah. Here, use your good arm. Hold this light on him. I'm going to frisk him. Callister, that checks. Yeah, I've seen him around. Mm, three yen, 15 sen, F. The key ring. Well, maybe those keys will lead us somewhere. We're already there. Huh? This one unlocks my cabin. This one's the food stores, paint stores, sail locker, bosun's chest. I don't get it. Those are your keys? No, but I got a set just like them. I had these made for my first officer, Mr. Gallagher. <laughs> After that key ring hit me, I tore into that stiff like a grave robber. I ripped out his pockets, coat lining, shoes, trying to find something to follow. The only thing with an address on it was a folded up square of rice paper printed in English block letters. It said, The New Chicago Palace of Joyful Dancing. Your welcome management, Madame Tallulah Nashimoto. Home cooking. <laughs> The new Chicago Palace of Joyful Dancing was a sagging, bomb-scorched frame and paper building on Motomachi Street. The front of the building was draped in red, white, and blue bunting, and under a star-spangled, slant-eyed imperial likeness of General MacArthur was a sign that said, Please to come in and dance with beautiful democratic geisha, Mr. Yank, to music of Leroy Suzuki and his hot jumpers. Below that, with fewer words but more meaning, was another sign. Out of bounds to military personnel. At the door, a blast of stale air hit us, sickening with rice, beer, sake, poisonous whiskey, and cheap perfume. A square-built porcelain faced Nipponese doll who might have looked attractive in native hairdress and kimono had put on a cheap Western style rayon dress and crimped her hair into a bad permanent wave to entertain the conquerors with a song she was never born to sing. Chalmers and I were supplied with a marble top table and two giggling geishas. In spite of the brilliant conversation, I found time to look the joint over for a face that looked intelligent enough to answer some of my questions. None of them, slant-eyed or straight, even looked sober. Then behind a portier of eucalyptus beads that partitioned off the bar, I caught a glimpse of what I was looking for. She was at least two heads taller than any other Japanese girl in the place. And the way she fit her Western clothes, you could tell she hadn't suffered from any vitamin deficiencies as a child. I guessed that this was the welcome management, Madame Talula Nashimoto. I left Chalmers in the clutches of Rose Brassum and Red Hot Mama and went into the bar. Hello, Mr. Yank. Are they treating you right? Um, I not come to dance. I come look for man, friend, other man named McAllister. You can stop the phony pigeon talk. I'm a Boston girl myself. Yeah. I should have known you didn't get this way in Skiaki. You like it? Well, enough to pity the poor G.I.s it's out of bounds for. We got a back door. What's the password, Constantino? I wouldn't know. What does that mean in Japanese? In English, it means a dead man on my ship. Why are you telling me this? Because he had an ad from this place in his wallet. Is that good enough? Well, now you are disturbed again. You are so often confused between friend and enemy. Do you agree? San Francisco and Honolulu? What are you giving me, San Francisco and Honolulu? Your chief mate. In those places, he was not the dishonest one you thought him to be. And here in Kobe, at the Rose Bar, he was not as drunk as you thought. I know that, but I don't know why. You will. I think he'd better explain it himself. You're telling me he's here? I'll tell you nothing. I only ask you to look. 
come. Uh huh. What brought him here? There are men who hang around here to do all kinds of little things for a few yen. One of them was named Chalmers. Chalmers? Yes. I recommended him for the job. Why? He was tired living, and I wanted to help him out. Kind of missed on that one, didn't you? Not at all. The dead man on your boat. That is Chalmers. The man who killed him. The man who brought you here. Don't tell me. He's McAllister, a Constantino man, and I let him pull a switch on me. You see? I told you you were confused between friend and enemy. Yeah. I'm still confused about you. You won't be. This is the room. Mm -hmm. Come on in, Connie. McAllister! Don't put on the surprise, Dr. Tallulah. I halfway expected this. Thanks for the lift, Tallulah. You give good service in this joint. Don't thank me. Thank Mr. Gallagher. Think nothing of it. But it's going to cost you, Mac. You pay as you go out. I'll be waiting in the bar. All right, boys. Put him in the chair. Oh, you don't. Come on. Come on. Tie him tighter. He's not going to talk with his hands. I guess we're ready to get down to business, Connie. Watch his eyes, Mac. You want him to be able to see that thing, don't you? I can see. I'm seeing plenty. We'll get it down to dollars and cents, Connie, so you can talk, huh? I got the stuff from Kang, and now you're going to tell me what it means, huh? I am, huh? Well, you better tell him, Skipper. It won't cost you much. Sure, I can believe that. I hope you can, Connie. You will start out with the map. Now, look at it. Go on, look at it, Skipper. You got nothing to lose. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> what is it? Looks like a lousy chart of a body of water between the peninsula and the mainland, doesn't it? I know that. Where is it? There's no position on the thing. No latitude or longitude. Don't be smart, Connie. You know where it is. Come on. Okay, put down the club, McAllister. You can have it. And I hope you get a lot of good out of it. That's a chart of Chesapeake Bay. Why, you... I knew you'd like it. It looks like it was traced out of a Rand McNally atlas, if that'll help. Leave him alone, McAllister. It's not his fault that Kang has a sense of humor. All right, Gallagher. You put the finger on Chalmers. You knew where he was going, when he'd arrive. Yeah, but I didn't know the map was phony. But you knew where Chalmers came from, didn't you? Yeah. That's where we're going, then. Where is it? Between here and Osaka, about 20 miles out. You got a car? I can get one. Woods? Yeah? You stay here with Connie. Leave him in the chair the way he is, but stay here till we get back, okay? Yeah. Okay, Max. Goodbye, Skipper. We might have made quite a team if we'd been born on the same side of the dollar sign, huh? Why, you... Let's go, Gallagher. We'll talk about that later. I sat there, lashed to the straight-back chair, and watched Woods for a half an hour, waiting for a glimmer of something beside Gunman to show through his eyes. But he didn't have it. The cord around my wrist started to dig in and the circulation was cut. My arms began to swell. I tried to cover up the pain with thoughts, but they didn't help because I couldn't skirt the fact that I'd been suckered in by McAllister with a simple switch of identities. And the rest of it didn't make sense. Especially that pencil chart of Chesapeake Bay. I finally got around to asking Woods for a drink of water. When he refused, I shut up. I spent another 20 minutes watching the moths wisping in to die in the flame of an oil lamp. I didn't hear the door as it was cracked open, but Woods did. He was on his feet with a belly gun cupped in his hand. Then all the fight went out of him. I didn't blame him. A new kimono walked in, wrapped very neatly around welcome management. Am I intruding? Depends on what you want, Tallulah. I brought you a drink and a phone message. Oh... Max says everything is under control, but to stay here till he gets back. Good. Uh, thanks for the drink. I hope you like it. It's got ginseng in it. I don't know whether I like it or not with me so busy. Just stay where he is. Enjoy your drink. 
Mm. Hey, what's fast? Where did that come on? Take your choice. The drink's gone. Well? Come here. That was the first time I'd ever watched a Boston geisha work. The girls on Beacon Hill should have picked up a few pointers while she was there. In 20 seconds, he'd melted from tough gunmen. Two sighs and a murmur after that, he'd forgotten I was in the room. By the time she finished with him, he didn't know he was there either. Oh. He still had a slightly surprised look on his face, but something new had been added. It was made of ivory and had fancy carving on it. It was a knife hilt jutting out at an angle from just over his heart. What's the matter, Captain Carney? Don't you enjoy the new Chicago Palace of Joyful Dancing? After that performance, sister, I got nothing but respect. Was well, good, wasn't it? Hold still, I don't tell you. Maybe sometime in a letter or something, you'll tell me what the devil's going on. <laughs> there. You moved them. You did hear me, didn't you? I'm glad all the Yanks aren't like you. With no time for anything but business. My hands hurt. But I can listen. Hmm. You know what it's sad about you. There's nothing to worry about anymore. You brought me here, didn't you? And I got you out of it. Yeah, that's a good part of the way, but McAllister and the others are headed for what I need. Instructions from Kang? No, they aren't. We heard different stories, then. There are many different stories in Kobe. Shall I hear your version? I think you'd like it. I think it would make you feel better. Hmm. From here, I could stand that. Your information from Kang is in good hands. Whose? Your chief mate, Gallagher. You're calling that good? Yes, I am. You are still confused between friend and enemy. What's your payoff in this deal? I don't need a payoff. Kang and son pay me very good salary. You're my Kang contact here in Kobe? What did you expect? Pot-bellied office worker? Well, I... You don't believe me. Really, I don't blame you. After what has happened, let me explain. Huh? I was to meet you on your ship. That's right. But with McAllister and the others of Constantino, I could not move. So? So with a messenger, I contacted Gallagher when he came ashore tonight. Oh. Chalmers was my idea. But your Gallagher was the genius who drew the map of Chesapeake Bay. What? Which they so cleverly stole from Chalmers on the Scarlet Queen. Yeah. Where's Gallagher now? Out wasting enough time so that I could make fatal love to Mr. Wood. You know, I'll believe all this when I wake up on the Scarlet Queen tomorrow morning well into the Inland Sea. You think it's a dream? I think it's a nightmare. To wake up, you will wait in your chair with your arms behind like before. Only here. Hmm? This time, you have Mr. Wood's gun in your hand. And the last conversation I had with Tallulah Nashimoto was in regard to the safety catch on the 25 caliber Sambu automatic. We tugged Wood's body out of sight. And she left as quietly as she'd entered. I sat there, more comfortable this time with my finger curled over a trigger. And I waited. All right, Connor, you were smart. Now let's talk sense about that shot, shall we? I don't know, Mac. Things have changed in Chesapeake Bay. What do you mean? Hey, where's Woods? Hey, Red, watch him! I got him, Skipper! Gallagher come in last. He slugged the man behind McAllister when I shouted, and I brought my sambu forward and got to my feet. McAllister made it to the door and out toward the entrance. I sent three shots after him. I wasn't sure of my aim in the dimness, but I thought I heard a body crash down the stairs. I went back into the room in time to see Gallagher pick up the other guy for the last time. Well, Skipper, are you proud of me? Proud of you? What for? Putting on that drunk act? For beating up three of my crewmen? For sending that poor Chalmers jerk to be a pigeon on the queen? For planting your keys on him so I'd follow them into this trap? I had to give him those keys so he could get into the trap. And what's it got us? A bunch of busted heads. And another black mark against Americans in a foreign port. Oh, stop it, Skipper. And for what? Are you nuts? Here. Here's what. Our sailing order's out of here. <laughs> here. Your instructions from Kang. You mean you've been carrying these things around your hip pocket all night? <laughs> That's another thing, the risks you take. And listen, 
I'm not forgetting you hit me. According to maritime law, that's mutiny. By dawn the next morning, Kang's instructions were safely memorized. And the Scarlet Queen left her collapsing berth and headed toward the clean sea outside the rubble-filled harbor. Stand by! Make sail! I swung the bows to starboard and we headed into the inland sea that splits the island group that is Japan. A good breeze swept up across Shikoku on our port. I cut the motors. With starboard sheet! The main sheet climbed skyward, cupped the wind, swelled out with it. To the ship sheets, men! Smartly now! The jib snapped out. The mizzen filled. The Scarlet Queen heeled over. Filled with life and movement again. How's the rig, Skipper? Enough canvas? We got the narrows to do. We'll see how she moves with jib and mizzen. Just so we get through them into someplace else. I didn't like those people. <laughs> Listen, Rat. <laughs> Speaking of people, I was going to ask you about that second glass on the table at the Rose Bar. Oh, that? Yeah. Well, you said you had a friend on Motomachi Street, didn't you? Well, you weren't ashore. All but... right. In Jinsen, you stay aboard. I'll go ashore. Yeah, I guess that's even, Stephen. Drink, Skipper. After you, mate. After you. Log entry. Catch Scarlet Queen. 5.30 p.m. Miles traveled, 5,591. Wind, brisk. Sky, hazy. Sea, smooth with high cross swell. Mainsail and mizzen reefed. Ship secured for night. Signed, Philip Carney. Master. Mutual invites you to sail into further adventure on the voyage of the Scarlet Queen next week at the same time. Porto Call, Jinsen, Korea. of the Scarlet Queen stars Elliot Lewis as Phil Carney with Ed Max as Gallagher. Bob Bruce was heard as McAllister. Jack Crucian was Charlie the bartender. Nielsen was Frank Gerstle. And Madame Tallulah was paid by Virginia Gregg. Music scored and conducted by Richard Aron. The Scarlet Queen, a command radio production directed by James Burton, is written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman. Charles Arlington speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.